Hey guys, welcome to Wiley's World. <laughs> oh my goodness. So today I thought I would bring it outside. Yes, it's, this looks so pink right now, but it's actually violet. I wonder if you can guess Wildy's favorite color. Now, I've, I've had a hard time with pink. I'll have to be honest, I've had a really hard time with it. And bangs, because I have this double calic thing. Oh my gosh, I got all the, I got all of the forehead. I got enough forehead for all of us. So, moving aside, if you can guess my favorite color, I'm going to do a little surprise for you in your next box, okay? All right? Out of the box, baby. All right? Now, I brought the amethyst because we're working with our crystal today. Uh, I shared each... Um, with each of you a quartz crystal that I found in Arkansas on Crystal Mountain and uh, so we'll do a, an exercise with that sort of a, our warm-up okay um, what else let's see let me look at this at my notes welcome to unboxed outside September so we'll enjoy it while we can for real. Right. Yeah. I hope you can hear me. We've got nature sounds and guys with machines. <laughs> but I want to touch base really quickly on your tree of life because I was just out and found this wonderful bark that was peeling off of the tree and I, I took one that was flopping around. Um, that would be really cool. I noticed it comes in layers also since we're using natural objects for these um, This this month in particular, okay, what else? Yes Your paper with lines we can call it the journal paper and as an exercise it would be cool if you kind of think about, reflect on the tree, your tree sculpture, and how you are embodying the qualities um, that you think of when you think of a tree, or how could you embody them or embrace them more. So that's kind of a reflective journal entry. Really, if you'd like to, all of the exercises are optional. That's the thing, you're in control of which projects or you, that you get into based on your interest, okay? Thank you so much for being with me and participating in Unboxed. I'm Wildy, and today we're gonna start off with an exercise, um, our warm-up. Is, is still life. Still life can be any object or set of objects that you observe. So it is to be still, it is to remain still. I found this big piece so that maybe you can see a little better, um, brought it out. And so you've got your grid paper. There are two kinds of grid papers that I sent to you and the big one is a good one to start with the large dark grids and the other one is for once you figure out the angles and how to how to work with the lines on a on a form that is much like a prism a crystal these quartz are prismatic so they're made of lines and shapes and angles and that are put together to create the form that you see. And the trick with drawing is just to look at one line and one shape at a time and lay it down on your two-dimensional space so that it can start to create the illusion of a 3D form. All right? That's, that's the trick to drawing. All of these exercises and projects are 
meant to be fun just fun it is not I want to I want to really mention this because it's there's no such thing as better best or not good with art how you feel about it is important but it's a process of doing that is the thing I want you to get into and just have fun with manipulating the materials and working with your hands and your brain and that connection builds yourself into a stronger person and artist so tap into that joy of just doing and try not to look at it so much as this is my thing, my art, and it is either good or bad because that's really not what we're doing here. It can't be bad, all bad if you're doing it and you're having a good time. So, and you can always put it away. It's just an exercise. It's like when you're done doing push-ups, you're done. You walk away. Okay? Same thing. Or you could hang it up or give it to a friend. Whatever. Now, I've drawn some grids for you guys that are a little bigger and um, I want you to pull out your crystal and a pencil and I'm going to use something very dark right now. Okay. So you can see but your lines don't have to be hard or dark. Um, in fact, light is good because then you can go over it harder in a different way. You can change, rearrange. This is practice. All of drawing is a practice. Okay, so now what I want you to do, um, you can put your crystal down if, if you can see the point of it. I want you to really look very carefully. Still life is about observation. So Okay, first thing, let's start with the very point and lay that down in one of the vertices on your page, okay? Just make note of a point and then come out with angles, with straight lines and edges that mimic the angles on your crystal. So the grid is there just so you can tell vertical, horizontal, and then everything in between. All of these angles, 45, 90, all the way around. So they help you see what's actually not. They're, they help you see the space in between, okay? The positives and the negatives. Okay, so what I'm, I'm looking very carefully. Now you'll notice that your prism, your quartz, has also, not only does it have the point and the angles and the triangles going out, but then it has horizontals that connect those. Let me, let me draw a big picture of what I'm talking about. So you can see. Okay, here we go. All right, so you've got, now I just, I just ignored my grid right here so you could see the, the pinnacle. And then what you're looking for first is where these angles are going, okay? How big are they? Are they uh, acute? How acute? Are they uh, obtuse more than, oh, what is it? Wow, whoa. <laughs> more than, less than, oh, more than a right angle. It's more than 45, obtuse. Okay, I had a brain fart. And then this is the next angle you're looking at here. So you can create these triangles. Now, mine was based on my head. I was not observing this time. I want you to really look super carefully. And then you'll have your longer pieces. Uh, they're lines and they are also creating shapes. It might be um, pretty organic down at the bottom. It's not gonna be a hard edge and you don't even have to draw that. 
Okay, so on the grid, I started with my point and then I looked at these angles and where they met up with my grid. Basically, I can see, oh, that's a, that is about that angle. And it's approximate. You know, there is no, no perfect way. There's no right or wrong. Just see what you think. Now, next, I'm going to look at how these angles happen. Okay, so let me do that really quickly. Now I'm really looking at my crystal. Ah, whoops, and breaking pencils. Head print pencil breaker over here. Well, I used to break a lot of crayons, but not on purpose because I like it dark and rich. <laughs> okay, this is a china pencil and that's just the, the name of it. It really means nothing. Um, except for it makes hard, dark marks. Okay. So here's, here's what I see related to my grid. Okay, and I saw this strange little um, um, torn off piece, this section over here. But then you can develop that, and there's room to do lots of them on your grid. Okay, so you can turn the angle, try something new from the side, from all angles. But the grid is just set up to help you figure out how far, where those points meet up. Okay? <laughs> Close up! <laughs> okay, what's next? Alright, so just play with that. And you don't even have to do it, of course. It's just offered up so that you can enjoy seeing and drawing in a little bit different way. I love drawing. And that, that'll get you warmed up. So how about pause me and practice with that. Have fun with it. Get into your little crystal and come right back. And join me when you're ready. Okay, because we'll be working on wake up, shake up. Climate action. Okay. All right. See you in a minute. Take about, you know, take as long as you want. Maybe you want to get into this for hours. I don't know. The the grid with the filled that fills the page. That one. Okay. Challenge. Don't pause yet. <laughs> the grid that fills the page is really great for working with angles develop the crystal idea, take it to the next level. And my challenge, brain challenge to you, is to fill that page, or as much of it as you'd like, with the angles that are creating a maze, or building crystals upon crystals. Maybe you want to have a whole page full of them. Um, it's a smaller scale, it's good for details, and it's kind of next level brain challenge. Ooh, ooh. Okay? So, come back when you're ready, um, and we'll talk about what you're going to need for the next project. You're going to need your cylinder. There's a crystal inside right now. I would like you to go find materials from outside the treasure hunt is where you can find things that will make noise when you put them, put it in here, okay? Um, things that won't decay or rot are good, but natural objects that you find around outside, okay? Put some nature in here. Uh, you'll also need your cup for glue, tin, sandpaper, and the sponge. And this is what the glove is really for. The glove, um, your fancy papers, your sticker papers with the S on them, sticker papers, scissors. Oh, I didn't even need my ruler. You can use a ruler on your crystal if you like. Everyone works differently. And 
You might want to use a, um, a glue brush. I use a glue brush for glue sometimes. We're going to use the sponge or a glue brush, which is just any old brush that you don't care about, but that when you wash out, you can use it for glue next time. So a marked brush that's really good for just spreading large amounts of, of glue. Thinly. Okay. All right. Come see me when you're ready and we'll start on our next piece, okay? All right. So I'm starting with Wake Up, Shake Up. YouTube. This is a, it's gonna be a rattle, it's gonna be a shaker. And you can use it to incite climate action awareness. Or you can use it in any way you want. It might be a good talking stick type of uh, object where you can pass it around the circle and let people speak their their truth and, and their awareness of climate action or anything. Talking stick is just a tool to pass and respect each speaker. So let's get into this, all right? Um, how about we need some glue in your tin? Let me do that. You can use white glue that has a little water in it, but stir it up real good, just a little bit, but that will allow the Elmer's or the white glue, thicker glues to pour. I am using craft paste, which I love because it costs 98 cents. It's, it's dry powder in a little box and it makes a lot of it and it's really good stuff. So I'm just gonna put my glove on because I'll use the sponge. Um, we're going to sand the outside. So get your sandpaper and start sanding gently the outside of your tube. And that's just roughing it up because it'll take the glue better. Gluing onto plastic is not optimal unless it has a lot of texture and it's roughed up. Probably want to wipe that off after next. Probably want to wipe that off. Okay. Get your sponge wet if you need to and squeeze out all the water. I notice mine's really dry. Um, put your objects inside, all of your little treasures from your treasure hunt. And you can include the crystal if you want in there or not but you're gonna seal all of it in with glue, okay? So glue your lid on. Too much glue is never great. Too much glue means it's gonna slip around, so just enough glue to seal on your lid, okay? And then using your beautiful little papers. Well, I'll start with this one. You can rip, you can tear, um, or cut. I'm just using scraps because that's what I've got. And then we're going to start gluing these on horizontally so that they're overlapping and creating our wrap. Okay. Ooh, I like I have more zigzags. I'm totally into zigzags. Okay, so I'll start with this one in the middle because I want to overlap. So using my sponge, I'm just going to apply this, the glue to the back. And I'm going to start in the middle so I can overlap under and over. Oh, I want those zigzags above. I wasn't thinking about that. It is good to plan stuff out, but it's also good to try out new things. So, whatever works, whatever floats your boat. And anytime something is being stubborn and won't stay as far as glue goes, 
be patient, keep trying, keep at it, never give up, <laughs> never give up. It will stick eventually, it just takes some problem solving and patience and diligence, diligence. Yeah, that means don't give up. Okay, so far I've got a couple of layers overlapping. Okay, and I'm just gonna keep working that around and around. Now, if it doesn't go all the way, c'est la vie. That, that's time for some new stuff. It's a new color. It's a new patterned paper. Okay, so just continue on. This might take you a while, that's great however long you want to use to try to cover your entire rattle cylinder with color. All right, so keep at it. The stickers are really good for putting on at the end. And the reason I put an S on there is so you, you know that you don't have to glue that on. It's got a sticker back. So your little sticker backs can go on too. All right. That's what's happening today, guys. You've got a couple of new projects and exercises to work with. Um, I want to mention this sticker that was designed by Mara Mud, Ms. Mud and be love and myself <laughs> uh, Mar did the graphics and so I will send you one of these if you want to Venmo me five bucks that's, that's what I'm doing it'll be great to put them out in the world and remind everyone uh, that one there is one love love is everything <laughs> So yeah, if you want one, I'll send you one. And don't forget to guess my favorite color too, okay? Hint, hint. <laughs> um, what else? Mm, let's see. Oh, take your 